This is Lugardowski of WeAreChange.org, and I'm here with Greg Palast of GregPalast.com, investigative journalist who recently uncovered a memo that's really going to shake up the seat of the next Federal Reserve Chairman. Greg, can you tell us what you found? Uh, pretty nasty stuff. A memo written to Larry Summers, who's Obama's choice or leading choice for head of the Federal Reserve Board to replace Ben Bernanke. In this memo, it uh, references Summers having a series of secret illegal meetings with the heads of the CEOs of the big five banks in America, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank. Uh, and uh, in this memo, it's clear that Summers is having secret and therefore illegal meetings with bankers to determine what United States economic policy should be worldwide. And basically, it's like the mob uh, meeting with the police chief and deciding, you know, what the police rules ought to be. Wow. I mean, that's just incredible. How were you able to get your hands on this memo, and were you able to verify it? Uh, how I got my hands on the memo, a little birdie came by and dropped it on me, and I don't remember his name. I or don't know now. <laughs> and either do I, given what's happened to uh, uh, other journalists. Uh, I have yeah. to be careful about this. It is a, it is a confidential diplomatic message uh, from uh, the within the State Department and Treasury Department so I'm not supposed to have it needless to say how did I verify it several ways one it had the private phone numbers of these top bankers so I called one but I had to say who I was uh, under BBC rules it wasn't Larry uh, Summers so it was click but I actually got to the chief the the chairman of the board of Citibank no secretaries nothing so it was legit inside numbers yeah. second I flew to Geneva, Switzerland, and met with the head of the World Trade Organization because the core part of this memo was how to force other nations to join America in jumping off the bank deregulation cliff. This was serious stuff. The international financial system completely collapsed, and this memo uh, was at, at the heart of it. And so I met with the head of the WTO, and he says, uh, Pascal Amy, oh, Monsieur Ballist, uh, we don't... Uh, have evil cabals of bankers determining uh, our policy here at the WTO. And then I showed him the memo. He says, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I confirmed it there. Then I, uh, uh, one of the nations, a na uh, in, in addition to the United States, which fell to its knees, the rest of the planet, including, uh, for example, Ecuador, which uh, was um, forced to accept toxic assets, toxic derivatives. In other words, if they want to sell us our bananas, their goods, we had to, they had to accept our bads, our derivatives and all this financial junk, which ultimately destroyed the economy of Ecuador. So because I had these documents, I flew to Quito, Ecuador, met with the president, Rafael Correa, who confirmed that, yeah, they did muscle him, that this, this is the real thing. He didn't know about that memo. He knew the effect of the memo and what Summers did to him and his nation. Um, and so he, he had suspected that, that there was such a plan, and so this confirmed it. I then also spoke with a member of Bill Clinton's cabinet who was with Summers. Um, that is Joe Stiglitz, who, had won the, who later won the Nobel Prize in economics. And he said he would sit in cabinet meetings with Larry Summers, and Summers would turn to Robert Rubin, then Secretary of the Treasury before Summers. Summers would turn to Rubin and say, whenever a policy matter came up, well, what would Goldman think of this? Well, how would Goldman feel about that? And finally Stiglitz said, you know, we're in the West Wing, you know. Um, you know, President Bartlett doesn't talk like this. I mean, uh, why, what do we care what Goldman thinks? Don't you think that's inappropriate? Shouldn't it be what, what's best for the American people? And they looked at him like he was, you know, just fell off a watermelon truck. So the result was that they uh, dumped Stiglitz out of the cabinet Larry Summers was raised to Secretary of Treasury under Clinton and then became economics czar under Obama uh, at the demand of the big banks, including Robert Rubin uh, of Citibank and Goldman Sachs. And so what we see here with the uh, possible, probable appointment of Larry Summers as head of the Federal Reserve Board is the bankers choosing their boy. It's not that Obama's choosing Summers. Summers is choosing Obama. The banks have chosen Summers for Obama. That's what we're seeing. And if you look at this memo, it's like, a, you know, I've said it's a, it's a conspiracy nuts wet dream because